And welcome to an edition of Monday Morning Quarterback. I am S. Soden. Uh, we have some tops to go through today. Um, now, it is a Saturday edition of Monday Morning Quarterback, but that's only because we were so busy last week with the draft and everything else. We didn't pump out a Monday Morning Quarterback, so we're going to give you a special Saturday edition instead of making you wait a couple more days. So, uh, without further ado, season number 96 is upon us. Week one has finished. We are into week two right now. Uh, this league is moving along at a rapid pace. Uh, we have a lot of new faces in the league. Uh, we have some new uh, new graphical artists in the league. You can see this graphic up here. Uh, made by one of our members. Very, very nice job. Very professional. Um, and some professional players in the league. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look at our top quarterback performers here. The Kansas City Chiefs, you're blessed. He comes in number one after week one with Patrick Mahomes. 338 passing yards. Uh, then JMO and Aaron Rodgers, 321 yards. Carson Wentz, why rock? doing a fantastic job with the Philadelphia Eagles. We watched him pull off the comeback victory in San Francisco week one, part of our double header. Uh, he had 309 yards passing with Carson Wentz. Deshaun Jackson had a very good game there for Philadelphia. Uh, then Matthew Stafford, 289 yards passing. Papa Smurf doing a good job in Detroit. And then stop the run, a longtime Soden Bowl owner, uh, using Derek Carr, pretty good here with 288 yards with the Oakland Raiders. So nice job there. Um, we're going to do just kind of a quick week one rundown here. Um, before we get into my top 10, we're going to start from 10 and work our way backwards. Uh, looking at the NF or at the AFC East, we'll start there. We have the New England Patriots and the New York Jets, both 1-0. Uh, Dolphins and Bills 0-1. Uh, moving on to the AFC South, we have the Tennessee Titans and the Jacksonville Jaguars, the Super Bowl champs of season 95. They are both 1-0. Texans and Colts are both 0-1. AFC West, we have the Los Angeles Chargers at 1-0. We have the Denver Broncos. Uh, they are 1-1, so they've actually already played their Week 2 game here. Um, that closes out the AFC. Let's go ahead and move into the NFC. Now we have the Minnesota Vikings, Coach Cy, and JMO with the Green Bay Packers, both 1-0. Papa Smurth with his Detroit Lions, they are 0-2, so they need to turn it around. We have A. Soden and his Chicago Bears, they are 0-1. They got shellacked by the Super Bowl champs week one. Uh, New York Giants, Philadelphia Eagles, both 1-0. Uh, the Dallas Cowboys, Coach Colids, 1-1, one one, doing a good job there in Dallas. Uh, looks like a pretty good season for him. And then we have the Washington Redskins, uh, number one draft pick. He is 0-1 this year. Uh, the Atlanta Falcons, already off to a 2-0 start. Good job in Atlanta there. Uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the NFC reigning champs, eat more chicken. He is 1-0. New Orleans Saints are 0-1. And the Carolina Panthers, who just fired their head coach, Shanks, uh, has a new head coach coming into the league. He takes over a Carolina Panthers team that is 0-2. Uh, looking at the NFC West, only one team with a win there. That is the Los Angeles Rams. They are 1-0. Uh, then we have the San Francisco 49ers, the Arizona Cardinals, and the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, all three of those guys are 0-1. All right, that concludes our standings. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move in here to my top 10. Uh, again, this is my top 10. This is not based on stats. This is not based on how you finished last season. This is based on who I feel is my top 10 hitting, heading into season number 96. Uh, so without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get this thing started. Uh, number 10, we have the Green Bay Packers. Now, these stats you see before you, these are their week one stats. So just kind of a brief uh Kind of a brief statistical representation of how they fared week one. Aaron Rodgers, 321 passing yards, as you saw before. Uh, Jones with 74 yards. And then Adams with 107 yards there. So at number 10, I have Coach JMO and his Green Bay Packers. Uh, the, you know, Green Bay, looking at this, uh, 
They didn't win the division last year. They didn't make the playoffs. Uh, but JMO, JMO had to go. He had some things to take care of. I think he was on vacation towards the end of the season. He gave away some free wins. I really look uh, for this Green Bay Packers team to take claim of that NFC North division and, and just do a good job of locking this thing down and head into the playoffs as one of the NFC's top teams. Uh, so number 10, Green Bay Packers coached by JMO. Moving in, number nine. Number nine, we have Mr. Witness, the witness. Uh, and his Los Angeles Chargers. Now the Chargers are a very, very talented team. Uh especially with Miss, Mr. Witness using that team. I see uh, Mr. Witness as being able to take out that uh, AFC West division with the Broncos, the Chiefs, and the Oakland Raiders out there. Uh, I really think that Los Angeles will get this done. They'll get to the playoffs. Uh, you can look at their week one there. Phillip Rivers, 215 yards. Melvin Gordon the third, only 40 yards running, but 92 yards passing to Moore. Uh, again, another game that we broadcast week one in our doubleheader feature. We watched those Chargers just kind of dismantle the Denver Broncos. Um, so we have the Los Angeles Chargers at number nine. Moving into number eight. Number eight may cause a little bit of a stir in the Soden Bowl community, but I am very confident in my selection here. Number eight, I have Y-Rocks, Philadelphia Eagles, Carson Wentz, 309 yards. Adams with 51 yards on the ground. And then we mentioned Deshaun Jackson, 103 yards receiving. Now, Y-Rock is on this list because he has gotten a lot better since Madden, uh, since basically Madden 19, moving into Madden 20. Um, even in season number 95 of Madden 20, he steadily improved his game. Now I look for him to really challenge uh, the Washington Redskins uh, for that that title of being kind of the top dog in the NFC East. No disrespect to the Dallas Cowboys uh, or the New York Giants. I know you guys are both good owners too, but um, you know, more of an image thing. The Washington Redskins last season only lost two games. Uh, so they are, in my opinion, uh, the clear favorite for that NFC East. But guess who one of those two losses was against? Why Rocks Eagles? And the Eagles did a good job in week one of taking care of business. Uh, they fell behind early in San Francisco, but they pecked away at that lead, and they ended up coming out on top in a solid performance by Carson Wentz. So why Rocks Eagles? Uh, I have you guys at number eight on my list. And moving into number seven, number seven is an extremely talented owner, Lurk God. Uh, Lurk God does just that, man. He plays great, great defense. Uh, he was able to win that AFC North, that black and blue division. You got J Cork out there. You've got Alpha Heel Seven. Uh, you have Lurk God there. Just a solid, solid division. I know I'm missing somebody there. You got Jim. Uh, Jim took over. He is a new owner in the league. He is just winning games here in Week One. So this may be the best division in Soden Bowl. We'll just have to wait and see. But uh, so for me. At number seven, I have the Baltimore Ravens coach, coach Lurt God. You look at uh, Lamar Jackson there, 169 passing yards, the dual threat capability. Uh, and then you have Freeman with only 21 yards on the ground, but then Sneed with 68 receiving yards. Uh, this guy plays great defense. He has amazing uh, stick skills. So he can pretty much take whoever he wants, and he will make them into a solid contender uh, so I have the Baltimore Ravens as my seventh best team here heading into season number 96. Uh, going into number six. Number six, I have the league's top defense. The Los Angeles Rams coached by S. Soden. Uh, Jared Goff, this is his week one performances here, only on the offensive side. Jared Goff at 221 yards. Uh, the newly acquired Tariq Cohen with 40 yards on the ground. And then the ageless Robert Woods with 98 yards receiving. He did get a big bomb there. But the story of that week one game was an upset in Washington. Uh, they handed the number one draft pick, 
uh, his Washington Redskins a loss and something they're not accustomed to. Now, if you recall in the NFC playoffs last season, the Redskins beat the Rams in a close game, which was also in Washington. Uh, Rams were going down for a potentially game-winning touchdown, and the Washington Redskins pick six them to put the game away. Uh, so this game again came down to uh, came down to the end. The Rams were able to hold off the Washington Redskins, and the big reason why was defense. Now this Rams defense was number one in the league last season. Uh, that defense, led by Aaron Donald, J.J. Watt, Martinez at, at middle linebacker, uh, on paper it is a true Madden defense. But uh, against the Washington Redskins, Aaron Donald accumulated three sacks. And J.J. Watt had 2.5 sacks, sprinkling a couple sacks here and there from other people, and it was a solid defensive outing. So uh, this team uh, this team really kind of pushed itself to the forefront last season and took that NFC West. They were kind of a late bloomer. They started off real shaky, looked like they were going to have a losing record, ended up going 10-6. and six. Winning the NFC West in this season, I think that they'll get this job done again. Uh, looks like the San Francisco 49ers may challenge them for that top dog spot, but we'll just have to wait and see. So number six, I have the Los Angeles Rams. Uh, number five, moving into number five, we have the turd himself, the Alpha Heel 7, uh, unfiltered. There you go, buddy. We have your Cleveland Browns. Now this team is the Browns, right? You wouldn't know it watching Alpha Heel 7 play with them. Uh, this team plays like an AFC All-Star team with him behind the helm. Uh, he can beat anybody in the league. Uh, he's doing a great job with Baker Mayfield. Mayfield is now a superstar X-Factor, and he's playing like one. Now, the stats here don't really represent it. Uh, Baker Mayfield with only 140 yards passing. Johnson with 81 yards on the ground, and Callaway with 55 yards. Now, Callaway is kind of my hidden gem of this team. Uh, you have, you know, you have Beckham, uh, Njoku, but Callaway is sneaky good. Last season, they had Des Bryant out there, so you didn't see too much of Callaway, but to me, this is my favorite right here. My favorite to win that AFC North, that black and blue division. I think the Cleveland Browns get it done this year. I think they make it to the AFC Championship game. And I think they really challenge uh, They really challenge either uh, the New York Jets or maybe the Jacksonville Jaguars for that Super Bowl contender. And I think this is a good shot for the Alpha Heel 7 to win his first Super Bowl in Soden Bowl. So... Uh, number five, I have the Cleveland Browns and the turd himself, the Alpha Heel 7. So moving into number four, number four, Coach Javel. Now, would you predict in season num number 95 that the New York Jets would win the AFC East? They would make a ton of noise and make it deep into the playoffs in the AFC? Probably not. Well, this New York Jets team led by Javel, who has extremely good stick skills, some of the best in the league, and frankly, some of the best in the Madden community. Uh, Javel with the Giants, he has Dalton at quarterback with 117 yards. Le'Veon Bell had 30. Crowder with just 25 yards receiving. Um, but you look at this team, and this team does have some talent. They just, as we speak, traded for Aqib Tlaib from the Los Angeles Rams, uh, giving away an offensive lineman. So picking up a superstar on defense in that secondary could be huge, and it could be bad news for the rest of the AFC East. Uh, I expect this New York Jets team to take care of business in the East. I think they're going to win this division, and I don't think it's going to be close. So I have the New York Jets winning the AFC East uh, and making it to the playoffs for a second time in a row. Uh, so there you go. Giants at number f or Jets at number four. Number three, number one draft picks, Washington Redskins. They do not have Alex Smith anymore. He did retire, but they get to use Haskins. Haskins at quarterback. He had 104 yards. This was a loss, but Darius Geis with 89 yards on the game, including a long touchdown run there. And Aguilar, 23 yards receiving. Uh, this Giants team has a lot of talent. They are a little thin on the depth chart. Uh, they have probably the fastest strong safety I've ever seen in a Madden game. 
Uh, so they can cover a lot of field here. But number one draft pick, stick skills and his football smarts really gets him that number three spot. He could be using the Redskins or the Cardinals for all I care, and he would still be at this number three spot because he can straight play Madden football. Um, he does a great job. He plays sim. He follows the rules. And, oh, by the way, he's very dominant. He doesn't make hardly any mental mistakes in the game. So if you're going to beat him, you better bring your A game. You better play a perfect game, and you better hope the Madden gods help you out. So number three, I have the Washington Redskins. Moving into number two, number two is also a longtime Soden Bowl owner. Eat more chicken. He eats a ton of chicken, and he wins football games. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers at number two, the reigning NFC champions. Uh, they played a close-fought game in Super Bowl 95 versus the Jacksonville Jaguars, and he could have won this thing. Uh, he had an untimely turnover. You look at his week one stats here, uh, Jameis Winston, 193 yards, and Barber with 158 yards. Then you have Evans with 100 yards, so uh, you have your running back and your receiver, you're hitting your benchmark in-game performance stats. Jameis Winston with a pretty good game there. Um, again, he runs the football very well, but he can light you up through the air as well. Uh, now, they do have White at linebacker, and i got to warn you, League, he is now a superstar X-Factor. Watch out, because he was probably one of the most dominant user-controlled players of the season last season. Whether it's intercepting passes, sacking the quarterback, tackling you for a loss, strip-sacking you, pulling the ball out, knocking passes away, it didn't matter. He was a human video game highlight reel, an e-reel, if you will, so... I have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and eat lots of chicken at number two with his Tampa Bay Bucks. Now, number one, uh, is there really any question who's number one here in Soden Bowl right now? The reigning Super Bowl 95 and 94 champions, uh, Kylo Ren and his Jacksonville Jaguars. He has made the Super Bowl three times in a row, winning the last two out of three. Uh, Nick Foles, 231 yards week one. Uh, Tevin Coleman, 120 yards on the ground. Smith with 132 yards receiving. Now, he runs his own show about in-game uh, helps, if you will. He breaks down different things through the game. Uh, so that tells you all you need to know about Coach Kylo Ren, uh, his ability to break down game tape, his ability to identify your weakness and his weakness and exploit or... Uh, mask that weakness of his own. Uh, his stick skills are just phenomenal. You don't see him making many mental mistakes. Uh, he runs the ball. Uh, <laughs> did I tell you he runs the ball? Coleman was a 2,000-yard back. Fournette had almost 800 yards running last season. That's 2,800 yards on the ground. If you're playing the Jacksonville Jaguars, you better stop the run. Coach, stop the run. I'm talking to you. As Stop the Run's gamer tag states, you need to stop the run if you play Jacksonville. So they are ranked number one because, frankly, nobody has stopped his run game. Uh, I see him winning that, that AFC Southern division. I see him winning that thing, and I don't really see anybody around him that can challenge him for that position. So I think he walks into the AFC playoffs with that number one seed, and we're going to force two people to try to travel to Jacksonville and take him down. I don't know if it happens. Uh, I think the best shot of that happening might be Coach Javel or the Alpha Heel Seven. Uh, those two guys uh, seem to have seem to have a knack for beating really good owners. Uh, so I could see, and I think Javel actually Javel actually beat Kylo last season. I could be wrong, but uh, we'll just have to wait and see. So that is my top 10, ladies and gentlemen, and here is the graphic of the top 10 for you. And there we go. We got the Jacksonville Jaguars, number one, the Tampa Bay Bucks, number two, the Washington Redskins, number three, the New York Jets at four. We have the turd himself, Cleveland Browns, the Alpha Heel seven at number five. We have myself, the Los Angeles Rams at six. Number seven, we have Lurt God and his Baltimore Ravens at seven. We have the up-and-coming Y-Rock and his Philadelphia Eagles at number eight. 
and Mr. Witness Los Angeles Chargers at number nine. And then at number 10, rounding out my top 10, we have JMO's Green Bay Packers led by Aaron Rodgers. That's all I got, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy your weekend. Thanks for watching my top 10. That's all I got. Later.